Hello everyone and welcome back to another breathtaking installment of every animated movie of the year. It is great to have you back and today we saw a movie about a superhero that I'm slightly familiar with. When I heard that this hero would be getting a movie, I wasn't too optimistic about how the film would be. But turns out, it was absolutely great. That film, of course, is Wonder Woman. Oh, and uh, we also saw Captain Underpants. So, Captain Underpants may appear to be a strange film for DreamWorks to make, if you are unaware of the hugely popular book series. The style is different from the other DreamWorks stuff, and it's about a guy in underpants. The story is pretty simple, here's the elevator pitch. Two best friends, Harold and George, are constantly dealing with their grump of a principal, Mr. Krupp. So they decide to use a hypnosis ring to hypnotize the principal to think that he is the superhero Captain Underpants, which of course is a hero that the two boys created. Zaniness and potty humor ensue. Now, in the film, when they turn Mr. Krupp into Captain Underpants, for a while he still doesn't have any powers, so he's just a guy who thinks he's Captain Underpants. But in the book, if memory serves, and I could totally be wrong about this, I think he actually gets superpowers from the get-go. Either way, my memories from the books come less from the plot and more from the tone and humor. It's pretty much wall-to-wall -wall fart humor, which I remember being hilarious when reading the books as a kid, and I think for most elementary-aged boys, that humor is right on target. Of course, you can understand my worry when the film was announced. How can they make a movie with story arcs and developed characters out of underpants and poopy toilet jokes? Well, the answer is, they really just don't. The film is pretty much a self-aware, full-scale port of the books to the movies. Instead of trying to inject serious stakes and deep plots into a story about underpants, they simply just lean into the absurdity and own it. I totally respect DreamWorks for taking such a risk with this movie. Its faithfulness to the books, combined with a very unique art style and storytelling style, makes it stand out. The two characters, Harold and George, are fully aware that they're in a story as they tell it. They can break the fourth wall and talk to the audience, or even change the very format in which the story is told, moving from flip books or flashbacks. At one point, they even stop the movie to fantasize in actual live-action sock puppets. Oh, and the very best homage to the books, of course, is in one of the battle scenes, they do the fight in actual flip -orama which was straight from the books, where you took two pages and sort of flipped them back and forth to give this kind of animated feel. It's hard to explain, but very cool, I'm sure, for anyone who remembers the books. Thomas Middleditch and Kevin Hart both go a long way in aiding this whole tone as well. They totally sell the we're in on the joke thing in a way that I think kid actors might not have. And they help the two main characters be really believable and likable as friends. So kudos to those two. But here is my conflict with the movie. While I applaud DreamWorks for making this strange, self-aware kid story that knows it relies on bathroom humor. In fact, twice in the movie they make jokes where they're like, potty humor really is the lowest form of humor. And I love that. I can't imagine any of the book readers are let down. So if I were rating this movie on how well it executed what it was going for, 10 out of 10. But if I'm rating it on how much I actually liked it, how much I enjoyed it, well, let's throw to the list. This was a tough one, but I try to remind myself no matter how much you guys disagree with my order sometimes, or how much my order may differ from the mainstream Rotten Tomatoes type of rankings, this is my list based on my taste. And the fact is, I just didn't really like this movie, even though I really think they hit a home run with what they were trying to do. There just wasn't enough for me to connect to. It was just like a shotgun blast of underpants jokes. Professor PP Dyerenstein Poopy Pants Esquire. Which is what it kind of should be. But all the same, there's not much to any of the characters, no real plot, and yes, I can hear you yelling at the screen, that's not the point! And I know that. The movie is the purest form of silliness, which is great, but the lack of some of the simpler things you've come to expect in storytelling made the 90 minutes pass real slowly for me, and made the film something I certainly wouldn't want to watch again. Something about underpants and poopy pants just isn't as funny to me anymore as it was when I was reading the books. Which I hate to say, because I hope to see DreamWorks and other studios make more big, bold swings. So, while I certainly didn't dislike the movie, I definitely didn't, like, really like it either, which seems to be a theme going on so far this year. 
Last year when deciding whether or not I wanted to continue this series, I was worried about just this thing. Sort of some good movies that I wouldn't necessarily really remember. I mean, there's not been one yet this year that I really, really like. I'm hoping that Cars 3 can sort of turn that around for me, but uh, who knows? We will have to find out, of course, next time, right here on Every Animated Movie of the Year.